Per usual, everything on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. I wanted to talk about alpha and beta today, specifically altcoin alpha. Inevitably, I'm going to say something that you're not going to agree with. So I, I want you to channel that anger, fear, aggression into the comments. Give me a comment below, like, dislike, all that good stuff. So for most people trading crypto, they are retail. They couldn't care less about risk, volatility. They're here to embrace the risk. They are here to embrace the volatility. That's what brings them here. This casino mentality a little bit, right? And to maybe understand the statistical differences between the S&P and bonk, for example. Okay, like let's go to an extreme or bonk versus gold. I just say bonk because uh, it's been going nuts lately. Dear future self, when bonk doesn't exist years later, remember that bonk was a doge clone on Solana. Okay, so these are measures of past performance. They are a way to help with portfolio construction, a way to help understand how much risk is in the portfolio, a way to help understand are you outperforming the benchmark. And in crypto, in managing crypto, that word benchmark makes me cringe because my benchmark as the manager or your benchmark as the manager may be completely different than a TradFi's TradFi manager's benchmark, which is almost always going to be the S&P 500. Typically, you'll hear me say in the context of alts, if you're not outperforming Bitcoin, what's the point? And to the TradFi allocator, they want to outperform S&P 500. It's not that simple, right? There are other things to consider. Volatility, risk, drawdown. You can talk about sharp ratios relative to the risk-free rate. You can go on and on and on and try to slice and dice this and then eventually reach a conclusion that says, okay, I want this percentage of BTC in my portfolio, or I want this percentage of bonk in my altcoin stack, whatever it is, okay? When you've made these measures, of, as I have done, most of them based on year-to-date numbers, the numbers are going to look different if you are talking about 30, 60, 90, 10 year. Okay, we don't have 10 year data for most of crypto. So when you're looking at past performance and backtesting, you have to realize that. And that's going to scare people away if you are not a crypto purist, crypto native. Us crypto natives sort of push aside all the stuff that the TradFi people care about. And that's why we are here early and they are not, right? There are certain things that they just cannot understand or fundamentally include in a portfolio. So alpha is your outperformance relative to the index. You always want alpha. Everybody wants alpha. Beta is, as an example, a stock's outperformance relative to the S&P or Amazon's outperformance relative to NASDAQ. When I say outperformance, I'm talking about volatility specifically. In the crypto world, as a crypto native, again, back to Bonk, we can say, okay, what's Bonk's volatility relative to BTC, right? In the totality of a portfolio, you may not want extremely risky assets entirely, right? So if you are an altcoin maxi, especially in a bear market period, you obviously do not want alts because they tend to outperform BTC to the downside, just as they outperform BTC to the upside. So you obviously have to read the room a little bit. What is the season? And we can look at past alt season, right? This is why people get so excited about alt season. It's because of the beta relative to BTC, right? It's the upside volatility. But if your entire portfolio is made up of altcoins, more likely than not, it is loaded with volatility and hence loaded with risk, right? And there may be times when you need to dial down that. You as the manager have to decide, right? When do I want to dial down that risk? When do I want to seek shelter from the volatility, whether that's allocating to BTC or allocating to a stable coin, whatever it is, right? But monitoring this loosely, now most of us know like, oh, this, this thing's super volatile or this thing isn't, right? Like Doge, right? Historically has been super volatile. Most people recognize it inherently and know what it is. They just don't necessarily know how to maybe calculate it or why it's important. And it's just something to think about. Most people wouldn't care less what the beta of their portfolio is in crypto land. So just simply alpha, this is what ChatGPT told me, by the way. Alpha is excess return relative to the benchmark. Beta is measuring volatility and risk relative to the market. And another way I like to think about this is, okay, if we are constructing a portfolio, just as a TradFi allocator would construct a portfolio, a 60-40, for example, 60% equities, 40% bonds. We're trying to get them to include BTC in that portfolio, right? 
Now, as a crypto native who's predominantly a Bitcoin maxi, even my own portfolio would gen would benefit from additional risk and additional volatility relative to BTC. So it depends who you are and why you're here. It's all relative. It's something to think about. And there, there's a ton of articles I will put in the description of this video. I'll put this massive spreadsheet in the description of this video as well. For me, I prefer to just visualize this quickly over time. And this is more about how do we get new money into the ecosystem that isn't here currently? How do we get TradFi into the ecosystem? If we can prove outperformance over time, if we can prove outperformance relative to the S&P, relative to the NASDAQ, people in the TradFi land have called Bitcoin a high beta tech stock. So relative to the NASDAQ, it has been high beta, both up and down, right? And as a ratio, if we are outperforming the S&P, outperforming the NASDAQ, again, this, this gets eyeballs and attention because the manager of any pile of capital is always looking for outperformance to generate a return for their client and to, at the end of the day, realistically, to generate money for themselves. So year to date, Bitcoin has definitely outperformed the S&P, outperformed NASDAQ, but you can see the beta in this chart, right, relative to these two indices, both in the bull market period and the bear market period. You can even look at Bitcoin miners relative to Bitcoin, gold miners relative to gold, very similar concepts, right? If we look at, this is the Bitcoin miners ETF, relative to inception, relative to when trading started, the basket of miners is still underperforming Bitcoin, right? But obviously on a year to date basis, the beta here has been massive. And if we look at historic periods during 2021 and 2022, again, there's been massive beta. This is Mara marathon relative to Bitcoin. So even as a crypto native Bitcoin maxi, who doesn't really understand why anyone would want miners in their portfolio, I have to be honest about it and say the past has said X, right? The past has said this has a multiplier effect. Now that may change. All this data may change once we have a real deal product where institutional capital doesn't have to seek out alternatives, right? They can just go to the Bitcoin spot ETF. We will see if this beta shrinks. I think it will because there's going to be just a better place to park capital. This is gold versus gold miners, right? Same thing. You can see the outperformance of the downside in a bearish direction the outperformance in a bull side, same concept. And then just back to crypto real quick. If we, if we look at the group of stuff, which we may include, right? Coin, Coinbase, GBTC, MSTR, and BTC. At some point, there's, there's a give and take here, right? Because if the beta multiplier is that much higher in things that are easy to access for institutional money, why even bother try to learn anything about BTC spot self-custody, right? At some point, the alligator jaws here are going to close, but you'll notice, oh, almost around mid-June, this started to really take off in, in a big way. Why is that? Well, that's when BlackRock came out and said they're applying for spot Bitcoin ETF. So I would say this is a visual for the beta amplification of products that are easily accessible for most people in the institutional space. That's why you're seeing these flows relative to spot. And this is just something to think about going forward. This may change dramatically when we have an ETF. It may not. But you could argue that if these high beta accessible products are just better, and this isn't this isn't true beta, you know, you have to include volatility, include a bunch of other stuff. But I'm just saying, let's just say we call it outperformance. If the outperformance amplifier is this much greater and remains that way, why bother trading Bitcoin at all? That's what a lot of people may say and may think about. So something to Think about once the ETF actually gets here. Now, if we go to spreadsheet really quick, just doing a simple man's outperformance grid here. I grab some alts relative to BTC. If you're Solana denominated, right? Maybe you're going to look at your alt performance relative to Solana. That's going to change a few things. Maybe you are a basket of alts denominated, right? Let's say you like Sol, AVAX, Tia, and uh, link, I don't know, right? So it's all relative based on a lot of different variables and factors, including duration, right? How long are we, what's the look back period? But for me, based on anecdotal risk, anecdotal volatility, right? I need to see extreme outperformance in alts to even pretend to care, right? 
if something like dot is barely outperforming, I don't care. I really don't. Now this is different than technicals, right? This is just purely look back periods. And you can see in the near term, some of these alts have caught up. Some of these alts have gone the other way, right? In the near term. Then of course there's uh, there's bonk, which I, I mainly included just to show you like how blown out this stuff gets for alts. But uh, there's bonk, there's Tia in the 90 day sense, which I don't even know Tia has been trading that long. Three months, right? Very few of these alts have actually outperformed to a great degree. Now you can say there's some rotations coming up. So maybe you'd want to focus on something like Tron. Maybe you'd want to focus on something like Link because it has underperformed, right? This is up to you in your portfolio. You can also look at, I put the sectors on here. You know, what is the performance for DeFi relative to Bitcoin over the past month? What is the performance for layer ones versus Bitcoin? Meme coins, right? Another way to think about it in a portfolio. Do I want a portfolio that's constructed purely of meme coins? I don't, but somebody might, right? And I would argue you don't actually need a full portfolio of that. If you want, you can just focus on the absolute extremes in a balanced portfolio, right? Like a balanced breakfast and <laughs> and that's enough, right? And then that becomes a sizing question and a percentage allocation question. I included coin and GBTC on here as well because in the nearest sense, coin has done really well. GBTC has dropped off a little bit. And again, this is pure percentage. And if we look at the benchmarks, let's say, it's hard to really nail down Bitcoin because it's a lot of things a lot of the time. It's not exactly always digital gold as far as how it acts. It's not always a high beta tech stock. It certainly isn't a yield instrument, but I think it's important to include something like TLT just to illustrate the massive outperformance here. This isn't total returns. So you got to keep that in mind. We're not including the yield. We're just including the price here. So that's always a fun calculation. But it's another way to look at things and another way to consider the entirety of the portfolio relative to just, oh, I'm a bonk community member. So I'm going to focus my whole thing on bonk, right? Even me looking at this, looking at these numbers has kind of changed my mind. Like Tia, it's been on a tear, right? Uh, really, when I get to the beta conversation, that's kind of changed my mind about a potential allocation in that. As much as I feel like that has no value, the market disagrees with me, right? Another way to look at this, we could look at the cumulative returns. Bonk isn't on here because it just would have been off the graph, but uh, Sol at the top there, Bitcoin in the orange, GBTC and coin up here, AVAX only recently outperforming. And for most people over time, they don't really want to mess around with alts if Bitcoin is giving them enough of the juice, right? This is another Bitcoin versus ETH argument for the institutional allocator. If you're getting enough exposure with Bitcoin, why bother thinking about ETH at all? Or if you're getting enough exposure to crypto with Bitcoin, why bother including a large percentage allocation to ETH at all? And it's back to the same conversation. If coin and GBTC have a higher beta, why bother? I don't think that's going to continue indefinitely. But people are definitely thinking about these relative value questions and looking at what's going on. S&P, by the way, all the way down here in the blue. Most people in Trap5 would look at our volatility and just puke and say, no thanks, right? There's other risks as well. There's headline risk. There's career risk if something blows up, right? As Bitcoin has outperformed, the career risk has been not having it in your, in your portfolio, right? Or not having it in a client's portfolio or not recommending it or not knowing enough about it and thinking about it. So if we look at the beta, there is an equation for that. Um, that is Kovar divided by blah, 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 var, right? Whatever it is. We're just going to pretend it's correct. If it's not, let me know. <laughs> this is relative to Bitcoin, okay? So ideally, you probably want a high return, low beta, if you can get it. You definitely don't want a high beta negative return, which we haven't really seen too much of year to date, right? Now, if I were to change this look back period, we may see some of those. We may see a lot of those. We may, we may see most alts actually fit in the high beta negative return category. And we can see the cluster of beta relative to returns kind of in the middle here. This isn't outperformance relative to BTC. It's just uh, return. So maybe a better measurement would be the alt BTC pair return. But in any event, a couple things stick out to me, right? Bonk, obviously, extremely high beta relative to BTC, insane return just in the stratosphere. Uh, Soul, I would argue like, look, if I'm looking for something that has an acceptable beta within my portfolio, you know, I want to get a decent return for it. The Bitcoin return is somewhere around what 150, somewhere in there, year to date. 
So I would argue this patch of stuff probably isn't good enough for me to generally care about broadly, right? We're not talking about rotation from week to week. We're just talking about broadly. Tia, on the other hand, now there isn't even 90 days of data, I don't think, trading data. But this is something that sticks out because the beta is less than one, lower volatility, and the return is has been so far pretty extraordinary. So I think this is an outlier based on the available data and when it started trading, but we'll see if that continues. And even for me, it's making me stop and think, okay, I know how I feel about this coin and who's involved. I just, uh, being honest, based on past results, might be something to include in the portfolio. All right, I threw BTC on the graph, but I think you get the point. You know, it's up to you to determine your acceptable volatility, your acceptable risk, and whether or not some of these outliers are worth including in a portfolio, right? Just just as a small allocation because of the way they've performed, you know, even for me. Maybe I buy some bulk eventually, you know, <laughs> like it's something for me to think about. Um, something else you can look at is the correlation matrix. This is a year to date correlation matrix. Again, you have to determine what's the most important thing to you the past month, two months, three months. Some of the alts I left off because there wasn't enough data to include them. But one of the interesting things, something that we talked about on this channel even early on, is how Maker was acting very different in the early stages of the beginning of the bull market versus now. And one way to quantify that is something like the correlation matrix. So the way to read this is what is Bitcoin's correlation to Bitcoin should be one, right? So all of these should be one. And then from then on out, what is Bitcoin's correlation to ETH and so on and so forth. So the lowest correlation on here is actually AVAX maker. But one thing you'll notice, there are no negative correlations here. Everything is for the most part highly correlated to some degree. One thing also worth mentioning, Bitcoin relative to ETH typically falls in a bull market period. That's what we expect to see. We expect to see what we're seeing now with alts, where we see rotations, rotation, rotation, ETH clearly lagging historically, just based on my own knowledge of what we've typically seen in a bull or bear market. You can also look at this pre post having, right? Again, it's all relative. It's all about specific time points of data. But again, let's say you are sole denominated. Maybe you want to look at XMR to smooth out the portfolio in whatever way is acceptable to you because that has a lower correlation. It doesn't mean you'll make more money, right? It just means that these aren't as correlated. So collectively, if your portfolio is, you know, massively correlated in a down move, for example, you're not really shielding yourself from any risk. A TradFi allocator would argue that these are all way too highly correlated and all I really need is one or two. I don't need a basket of 10 to 15, right? So again, it depends on the manager. It depends on who you are and what you want to do. One thing I also thought I'd look at was the outperformance relative to market cap. And this was also a little bit surprising to me. Over the past 90 days, Bitcoin outperformance has mainly been concentrated in the higher caps and not the lower caps. So the past doesn't mean it'll continue to the future, but again, something to consider if you think that's going to continue, that may change your allocation behaviors. If you think the mid caps, low caps, as historically they tend to get rotated into, that's going to change, right? That's also something to think about. Uh, if we put ETH and Bonk on here, right, we just uh, blow out the graph, so it's kind of useless. <laughs> just interesting to look at that again. But the market thus far, over the past three months has definitely been focused more on higher caps than lower caps. So alpha, your performance relative to the index, beta, a coin's performance relative to an index. Hopefully this is the start of conversation for yourself and your own portfolio journey to get the juices flowing and thinking about maybe I don't need 20 meme coins in the portfolio. You know, maybe I want to smooth that out a little bit. Maybe you want to understand volatility and risk a little bit better. Even if you're not making these calculations, it's worth thinking about. So let me know in the comments below what you thought of Alpha and Beta video and how you use that in your own portfolio. That's all for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.